Hi, it's Miss Melissa with the Oosterhout Free Library. Do you want to see something really gross but fascinating? Stay tuned to the end of this story. We're reading the second part of Horrible Harry and the Mud Gremlins by Susie Klein, published by Viking. They're going to look for stinkhorn mushrooms. And stinkhorns are real. And they smell really bad. And they look really interesting. And some of them are, are really gross. And that when they start to grow, they can actually push through cement and they can grow several inches in one day. So maybe that's worth crawling through a fence to see, but you could get in a lot of trouble when you do that at school. So let's see what happens. Sydney scooted under the fence while the rest of us made our human wall. Remember, they all stood in front of the fence so the teachers wouldn't see that one of them went under into a hole. Act like nothing's happening, Mary snapped. Suddenly, we heard groans coming from Sydney. After he crawled back under the fence, he swayed back and forth. Oh, that smell! Stinkers are so gross! The next thing he did was fall flat on the playground like he was dead. Get up, Sid, Mary scolded. You'll call attention to what we're doing. Sydney acted like Mary was a drill surgeon. He jumped up clicked his heels together and joined our human wall. Dexter scooted through the hole and then Ida went next. When I looked at my watch, I noticed we didn't have much recess left. Song Lee, I said, you and I had better go together. There won't be enough time afterward. Song Lee agreed. She and I scrambled under the fence and raced over to Harry. He was kneeling on the ground behind the tree. Welcome to the kingdom of mushrooms, guys. Take a look at these babies. Song Lee's eyes were as big as mine. It was like nothing we had ever seen before. Ten mushrooms poked through the earth like white thumbs wearing olive green slimy helmets. Stinkhorn mushrooms are cool, huh? Harry exclaimed. Song Lee giggled and nodded. She loved slimy things, like Harry did. I wasn't so crazy about them. My grandma and I spotted a whole bunch of them on our hike last Sunday in the woods, Harry explained. She has this neat mushroom guidebook and is teaching me the names. We have mushroom guidebooks here at the library. Smell the top of them. Sung Lee knelt down and put her nose real close. After she inhaled, she smiled at Harry. I'll take this one back with me to make a slide in the microscope. Ah, I groaned. These mushrooms smell worse than rotten eggs. No wonder flies are buzzing around here. It's a putrid smell that attracts them, Harry explained. That's what Grandma says. The putrid smell didn't seem to bother Song Lee. She used Harry's magnifying glass to get even closer. There are tiny holes in the stem, like sponges. Yeah, Harry agreed. Hurry up, you two, Mary whispered. The bell's going to ring any minute, and I won't get a turn. Song Lee ripped off a small part of the olive green cap as we hurried back under the fence. Three years later, Mary snarled. Finally, it's my turn. We all watched Mary get down on her knees and try to squeeze under the wire fence. She had a little trouble, so we gave her rear end a little nudge with the backs of our legs. She wasn't gone long. When she returned, she had one comment. I know why they call them stink horns. They stink. Just as the bell rang, Harry popped up. We slapped each other five and raced across the playground. I told you it'd be a piece of cake, Harry bragged. When we got back to the classroom, we had 15 minutes of activity time. No one said anything that made us nervous. Song Lee and I made another slide with a specimen from the stink horn. Harry got out the eye encyclopedia for insects. He wanted to draw lice and ticks for the writing wall. Suddenly, the teacher's voice shattered our concentration. Who's tracking all this mud on our bland, brand new yellow moon rug? The teacher asked. Just look at these dirty footprints. Where could they come from? There's no mud on the playground. It's asphalt. We all looked desperately at Harry. The mud gremlins, he muttered. 
Miss Mackle didn't laugh when Harry said mud gremlins. We didn't either. We all knew it was a big, fat fib, but not one of us said a word. Who are the mud gremlins? Miss Mackle asked. Harry hemmed and hawed a bit. Then he explained, when we don't know who did something at my house, we usually blame it on the gremlins. My great-grandfather, Sam Spooger, always told me that during World War II, when things went wrong with his plane, everyone blamed it on the gremlins. They're little creatures that mess things up. Miss Mackle managed a small smile. The gremlins, huh? Yep, Harry continued. They even take things at my house like socks and keys. I bet they tracked mud onto our classroom rug. I don't think so, the teacher replied. Maybe they take your socks, Harry, but they didn't track in this mud. Does anyone else have an explanation for this mess? The class looked at the brown footprints that crossed the yellow moon rug several times. Mary immediately went to her seat and started writing. Song Lee turned off the microscope and hurried over to her desk. When she put her head down, I knew that she was thinking the same thing I was thinking. Telling a gremlin fib was one thing. Keeping the truth from our teacher was another. We all knew what the truth was, too. We were the ones who tracked in mud. We broke a school rule by going under the fence and into the empty lot without permission. The teacher waited patiently for someone to say something. It was a very long, uncomfortable silence. I could feel the goosebumps popping up on my arms. I could also feel the wet sweat dripping down the sides of my face. I feel sick, Song Lee blurted out. Please, may I go to the nurse's office? I knew it. Song Lee felt awful, too. Just as she got to the doorway, Mary jumped out of her seat. Wait, we'll all feel better if I read this now. Song Lee turned around and listened with the rest of us. <clears throat> Mary cleared her throat and read from her paper. I hate stinkhorn mushrooms. They're smelly and ugly. But more than that, I hate fibbing. It can make you sick. You let people down like your nice teacher. I'm one of the med gremlins that sneak through the hole in the fence at recess to see a stinkhorn mushroom. Because it rained last night, the dirt and the lot stuck to my shoes. I made a real mess out of everything and not just our classroom rug. I'm very sorry. I hate fibbing. As soon as Mary read her story, Song Lee ran into the teacher's arms. I'm a mud gremlin too. I'm so sorry, Miss Mackle. Dexter and I showed the teacher the bottoms of our shoes. We did it too, we said. We're sorry. Me too, Ida said. Sydney whispered something, but no one could hear him. Harry bowed his head. It's all my fault, Miss Mackle. I got everyone to go under the fence to see the fungi. I'm real sorry. The teacher folded her arms as she looked at Harry. Well, she groaned, I accept the apologies and the mud gremlins. Each one of you seems to have genuine remorse. I'm glad Mary and now the rest of you are telling me the truth. That's what is most important. But this is no laughing matter. You broke an important school rule. You went on a little science field trip without permission. There will be consequences. I'll be calling your parents, and you'll have to stay after school today. All of us nodded while Harry reached for the hand broom. I'll start cleaning the dirt off the rug, Miss Mackle. I'll help Harry, Sung Lee said, reaching for the dustpan. She seemed to be feeling a little better. I'll help too, I said. That day after school, we did chores for one hour. Harry and I used scrub brushes to clean the new moon rug real well with soap and water. Then we washed the blackboards and all the desk desktops with big purple sponges. Song Lee, Ida, and Mary rearranged all the books in our two large bookcases. One was for fiction and the other was for nonfiction. Sydney and Dexter swept the floor and cleaned out the teacher's closet. The worst part was facing our parents afterward. The best part was that the girls found more neat books about mushrooms and fungi in our own classroom library. And Sydney found a lunch bag that was in the teacher's closet. 
Inside was an old orange. It had grown an amazing layer of green and white mold. Miss Mackle let us look at it with Harry's magnifying necklace. Song Lee even made a slide of it. But the very best part was that Miss Mackle planned a visit to a nearby state park where there were all kinds of mushrooms. And everyone remembered to bring a permission slip, even Harry. So now I'm going to show you some stinkhorn mushrooms without you having to crawl under a fence or break a school rule. So there are pictures on this, these slides and also some more information about what's available at the Oosterhout Free Library. We'll have a new book soon. Let me know what you'd like to read.